Risha, and this is... I don't think it's supposed to just be me today. Jacob! Jacob! Presenting King Jacob! <laughs> oh. Hey, what's up, Reese? Hey, what's up? Did you just <laughs> present yourself? No, no, that was somebody else. That I, I hired the guy, and he's like, Whoa, presentment thing, wow, you know? That's cool. Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. glad you came here and we could gather together. Yeah, so yeah. the reason I'm dressed up and all is because I heard we're gonna talk about a king and a kingdom, and uh, oof, man, it just, I just wanted to dress up, you know, yeah. get in the spirit of yeah. it, you know? Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, you know what? What? God gathers his people. Oh my goodness, the first thing that we the do. The first thing we do. His people, God, God gathers, gathers His people. people. Um, we one always more time. have to say it. Yeah, another time. Should we do it like in a really high pitch? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ready? <clears throat> Wow, I didn't know I could yeah, get there. I know, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, well, it was really cool that you had that king get up because yeah. we've been talking a oh. lot about what Jesus has been doing, yeah, right? You All know, these miracles. <sighs> What's one of your favorite moments so Ooh, far? I think my favorite one was whenever the storm, you know, it was crazy, oh, and then yeah, yeah, he yeah. calmed the storm. Yes, he did. He calmed the storm. Okay, my favorite yeah, is yours? when he was walking oh, on water. That was amazing. And then he amazing. calls Peter to, call, to walk on water too. Yeah. That was crazy. Such an awesome miracle. I know. Okay, what are your thoughts? What do you yeah. think Jesus teaches the most about according to the Bible? Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. I'm three thinking, guesses. yeah, I'm thinking it's definitely gotta be love. I mean. No, it's not. <sighs> Two more guesses. Okay, Um. what about like sin, repentance? That's a good guess, but it's not it. Hmm. One last guess. Uh, money. That's it. I feel like a lot of people think that's it, but it's not. It's actually, huh. he teaches about God and his kingdom. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So that's what we're going to learn today. That's what we're going to learn today. But first, we're going to do some freeze dance. <laughs> So Rish, you mentioned this God's kingdom. Yes. So is this like a house that God lives in? Right. Like neighborhood? Right. What are we, what are we talking here? Right. I say kingdom and you think castle, right? Yeah. Well, when we're talking about God's kingdom, I'm talking about God who establishes himself as king and reigns over his people. Oh. That's God's kingdom. Okay, so where is it? Right. Okay, so when Jesus came, he said that he was establishing God's kingdom and he brought it with him. Okay. And so when Jesus resurrected and yeah. ascended, right? He ascends, don't, don't forget that. Um, he actually is going to come back and bring back the kingdom and he's gonna rule as king and take over and let all those people that think they're kings and all those rulers and stuff. No, he's gonna blow them away, wow. take them away, so and he's gonna be king. Wow, so this sounds like an awesome place. I I mean, we definitely want to be there. Yeah, you want to invite people to the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. And so literally how you can do that, I mean, you trust in Jesus and that's how you become saved and you get to be in God's kingdom. Awesome. Yeah, Sweet. and that's what we're going to learn about today. Let's do it. Okay, so why don't we pray and then jump into today's lesson? Yeah, that sounds great. Pray with me, guys. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for gathering us here today. And um, we just pray for uh, Amy as she speaks uh, your word and uh, help us listen, help us understand, um, and help us um, 
just learn more about you and your kingdom and how uh, we can be a part of it and uh, lead others to it. Yeah. Um, so Lord, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, take it away, Amy. Yeah, go for it, Amy. Woo! Hey guys, Amy here, and I am so excited to jump into this lesson with you. So first, do you remember that question that Rish asked, just asked Jacob? She asked him, what is the one thing that Jesus talked about the most in the Bible? Do you remember? It wasn't money. Nope. It wasn't love. It wasn't forgiveness. Hmm. It wasn't on sin or repentance. Nope. Nope. What was it? That's right. It was on the kingdom of God. So if the kingdom of God is so important that Jesus talks about it the most in the Bible, we should probably pay attention to it, right? Okay, so who can tell me? Where is the kingdom of God? Hmm, can we see it? Hmm. It's not just in heaven, but it's here on earth too. Jesus said that the kingdom has come and will come. So not only is God ruling now, but one day Jesus will come back and get rid of all sin in the world and he will rule over. He will be the only king. Okay, I have another question. So who gets to be a part of the kingdom? Do I? Do you? Do our friends? Anyone who repents of their sin and asks God into their hearts to save them gets to be a part of the kingdom. So that's all of us. So, all right, now that we have a better understanding of the kingdom of God, let's see what Jesus tells his people, the stories that he tells them, in order to teach them more about the kingdom. So we're going to look at these stories that he calls parables. So, with me, grab the Bible, grab your sword here, and we are going to open up to Matthew chapter 13. Remember, Matthew is one of the Gospels, um, so it's going to be kind of towards the back of your book in the New Testament. And we're going to be in chapter 13, and I'm going to read starting in verse 1. So pause this video if you need to try to find that page and meet me back here. So Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. That day, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. Ooh. Oh man, why are we getting this boat together? Oh, this boat? Yeah, well, this one. You see, Jesus is gonna teach on this boat. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. True story, true story. Wow, what, what is, wait, he's teaching on, why is he teaching on the boat? Oh, good question, good question. Well, you might have noticed before when you were maybe uh, at the, the lake or yeah. out on the Sea of Galilee fishing or something like that, that your voice can carry really well yeah, 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 across yeah. water. Yeah. So a lot of people can hear you. Oh, okay. It's gonna help Jesus teach. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, cool, more cool, people cool. will be able to hear him. Cool, well, I think we're almost done. Um, oh, hey, Jesus. Hey, we got this boat ready for you. Oh, yeah. This hey. is perfect. Boat's ready. Wow. Thank you guys of for course, doing this. Yeah, of this course. is going to be great to teach them. And so, yeah. I think now I'm going to teach the people. Jesus. Jesus. We heard you talk about uh, the kingdom of God, but what is the kingdom? I only see you and your followers. Hmm. Good question, friend. There certainly aren't many of us standing before you teaching about God's kingdom right now. Yeah, Jesus, that, he does make a good point. Hmm. Uh, there's only like 12 of us disciples and just a handful of other people following you. That doesn't seem like a kingdom. Yeah, great point, great point. Well, let me tell you a story. Friend, tell me, what is the smallest seed in this region? Uh, hmm, a peach seed? Well, not quite a peach seed. It's actually the mustard seed. You see, the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is, it is planted, it grows. When it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and it becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Okay, hold on a second. 
Jesus is supposed to be teaching us about the kingdom, right? So why is he talking about gardening? Well, that is a great question. So the parables might seem like some random stories that Jesus is telling us, but they're actually teaching us about other things. So when Jesus is talking about growing the seed, he's actually talking about God's kingdom. So what do you think the seed in this story that Jesus is telling us represents? Yeah, you got it, Jesus and his disciples. Okay, so Jesus also said that the seed, that little tiny seed grows into a big tree that gives shade to the rest, shade and rest to many animals. So what do you think he means by that? This tree growing and giving all kinds of shade. What does that mean? Jesus is, that, is saying that although the church started as just this small little seed with a few disciples, it would grow to stretch across the whole world and give a home to countless people everywhere. And guess what? We see that today. That church grows, it grows every day and more and more people around the world know Jesus. So that seed that started as just Jesus and his disciples has grown into a big tree that stretch, stretches its branches all over the world. Okay, so let's keep on going and see how it's growing. We're gonna read now in Matthew chapter 13 and we're gonna skip down to verse 33. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. Oh, I get it. So even though there aren't very many of us right now, we will grow as a kingdom into the future. That's right. Uh, I don't know. I don't really get it. Well, how about think about someone making bread? Beautiful morning in the south of France. Jacques, it is time to open the bread shop. Oh, okay, what can I do, Gaston? We must start with the ingredients. Get me the flour. The flour! Put in the bowl, in the bowl. Thank you. We need water, water, water. Oh, mademoiselle. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I love me some water. Mm, but oh, you must make it sweet. We need some sugar. Sounds so good. Mm -hmm. Sugar! Sugar! Oh. Oh, Gaston! Wait, 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 look, look, look! Mm, look good. But Gaston! It is so small! What is going on? It is Just supposed to rise! Wait, 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 it is paste, supposed to grow! Paste it. We need the yeast! <gasps> the yeast! Give me the yeast! Uh -huh. A little bit! Only a little bit! It's just a little bit of the yes, yeast? Yes, just a little bit, but we need the yeast. But it is so small, it's Gaston! What, what, what? This little bit, with all the ingredients in the bowl, only this much, sprinkle, sprinkle, will make the bread. And then it rises and goes throughout the entire ingredients. And woo! You will have the bread. It will rise. It will rise. It will grow. It's so big. But it is so small. Like big tree. It spreads big. through all of it. All of it. So what you are saying is you prepare the ingredients and then you add the yeast and it grows throughout. Like water in a tree. Mm. Oui, oui. That is perfect. Thank you. We must wait. Let us go. Leave it in peace. Mm. Man, those are some enthusiastic bakers who are really passionate about what they do. Have you ever tried to make bread? I didn't know this, but we learned this now. Did you know that the most important part of making bread is the yeast? I had no idea, yet it is the smallest ingredient and you don't need that much of it. Well, that reminds me of in the same way that the baker prepared all of those ingredients before he finally added the yeast for the bread to grow and rise. God was preparing the nation of Israel and um, for the coming of Jesus. And in the same way we see that today, and Jesus was with his disciples and he was like that little yeast. You just need that right ingredient that's going to then spread throughout the nations. And 
So we see the way Jesus' word and his truth and his love and how he is starting his kingdom spread through his disciples and is spreading throughout the nation with us today and even still with other people. So let's continue to read two more stories um, that talks about the kingdom of God. So now we're going to jump still in Matthew 13 down to verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Okay, Jesus, I think I finally understand it. So you're saying that even though there's not very many of us right now, just a couple Israelites and you, it's yeah. gonna grow and spread across the whole world even? Very good. Oh, I get it. So wait, Jesus, is there any other stories you can tell us about your kingdom? Ah, oh, well, I do have a couple of more stories. The first is about a man who found a treasure in a field. Oh, I love my son David, he's the best. Oh, whoa! Oh, what was that? Oh, there, there's something right here. What is this? What? There's something buried. What is this? Is, is that a treasure? This is a treasure! I was just walking along and oh! There's some treasure! Oh! There's so much treasure here! I cannot believe I just stumbled upon this in this field! Oh man! This field is so valuable! I must I must sell everything! This treasure is worth more than anything else! So, our friend found a very valuable treasure in a field. What should he do? Uh, I think he should do anything he can to get that treasure. Yeah, he should buy the field if he has to. Well, oh, but the field will cost him everything he has in order to buy it. Well, yeah, but then he'll have an even greater treasure. That's right. Don't you get what I'm saying now? I gotta be honest, Jesus. I'm still a little confused. Hmm, that's okay. Let's try one more story then. Oh, what a wonderful day in the market. Pearl shopping. Wait, Jesus, who is this man? Well, this man is a merchant. He goes around looking for the best and finest pearls. Why don't we see what he does? Let's see what we have today. Too small. Too yellow. Got some cracks in it. Oh my goodness! This is beautiful! This is the best day ever! Miss, how much is this? Oh, 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 yes, that one? That's the price. I'm afraid it's very expensive. I will sell everything. My livestock, my house, my fence, my flowers. I'll sell it all. I'll give you it all. I'll give you everything I have. This is the most amazing, beautiful, wonderful, unbelievable pearl I've ever seen. Ever. I got it. I'll give you everything. Wow. Both of these men seem really excited. Why are they so happy? Well, they both found the treasure that they were looking for and everything that was better than anything else that they had ever seen. What are they willing to give up in order to get their treasures? That's right, everything they have, their house, their food, their everything. Uh, what does that treasure represent in those stories? Do you remember? Yes, God's kingdom. So what should we be willing to give up in order to gain access to the treasure of God's kingdom? That's right, we should also be willing to give up everything. So what does it look like to give up everything for God's kingdom? Well, that looks like knowing and trusting in God no matter what our circumstances look like and be willing to love Him and obey Him and trust that He is good and that He desires good for us and just resting in knowing who He is and what He's done for us and knowing that I'm a sinner and we are all sinners in need of a Savior and to be saved by Jesus and trusting that Jesus died for us and died for our sins and accepting him into our hearts, 
then what does God say? That we are accepted and invited into his kingdom. So if you have questions about what that looks like and how you can be a part of his kingdom, ask us, ask your parents, ask us here at the Paradox Church, and we would love to talk to you about it. It has been such a joy to learn all about God's kingdom uh, with you guys today. Uh, can't wait to see you guys next week. Wow, that was such a great lesson. And you know, I really want to worship now. Yes, it makes me want to worship. Okay, I think we should sing King of Everything, which okay. is a song of adoration. Because That's God perfect. is worthy to be praised, right? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and so if you're able, please stand and worship with us. Oh. You know, after learning about God's growing kingdom, you know, it really leads into what we're, what we're, our mission is for the week, you know? Totally, yeah. And you know what? God calls us to be a part of his mission by inviting people into his growing kingdom. That is so valuable. And so God sends us off on mission with this from Matthew 28, starting in verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Go in peace, Paradox Kids. See you guys.